A very pleasant August morning to you. I'm out here, quite literally, in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in central Mass, near the uh, near the Quabbin Reservoir. Right in front of us now is a nice orchid. Of course, that's as always what I came up to look for. Really common one though. This is a uh, uh, Goodyear pubescence. This is the downy downy rattlesnake plantain. You know, it's pretty nice. Not what I came looking for. I came looking for Coralorhiza is supposed to be over here and then a cool species of Spiranthes we might get to see. Among some other stuff, maybe. This guy is in the, uh, in the Orchidoidea subfamily. The subfamily of entirely terrestrial orchids. There's a nice flower there. These guys are pretty small. Look at these two. These two caught my eye. But you come over here. The lighting's a lot worse, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, put these ones on video. You come over here. Oh God! These ones are doing a little, a little bit bigger, a little healthier patch over here. Entire genus Goodyera. Super notable and super easy to recognize for those venation on the leaves. I'm gonna put up a short about these. As you can see, the entire thing is just basal leaves, a hairy stem with some bracts on it, and then uh, just a whole spike of flowers, ovary inferior, like every other orchid, and just cute little, a cute little uh, spike of white flowers. How about that? Nothing terribly, nothing terribly interesting. Not reinventing the wheel or anything, but uh, you know, pretty nice. Coming up with a whole bunch of these weird lycopods. Looks like you've got a. Dendrolycopodium, and then, uh, what is it, Diaphasia? One of the ground cedars, as they're called. No clue which one. Oh, look at the tiny. Where is he? Tiny little good year right there. How cute is that? Cool plant. We got a lot of other stuff to see, though. This is a little wildlife management area they have set aside, and I'm having... Oh, there's some water down here. I might have to find another way around here. But uh, no real trail through here. You're kind of just left to your own devices. Let's see what's going on around this body of water, if anything. I've seen some real cool um, some real cool asters already. So I'll be able to show you that. They get a little billy inflated everywhere, which you've seen before. I'll show you that. And then uh, you know, I won't spoil the surprise on the way back out. I got something real nice to show you. Okay, we got, we got a little bit of bad news while hiking through. You know, all this. I uh, busted my tripod, but I mean, you know, $10 gets you what $10 gets you at the end of the day, so I'm not sweating it. But right here, I've got a lovely orchid that I've, I've had a chance to see once before, although not as, uh, not quite as grand as this, as this, as this magnificent bastard. This is Platanthera psychotes. This is actually, you know, despite its quite, you know, exotic uh, appearance, uh, much like the, the good year we had already seen, you know, not too uncommon of a plant in the grand scheme of things. Um, Pythanthera grandiflora, you know, has quite a bit of resemblance to this, another, you know, really attractive purple orchid. What I'm trying to do is not get my butt wet as I duck down here to show you. Like all, like most Pythanthera, you know, it's got a nectar spur, which I'll show you in a second, but there's that entrance to that nectar spur right there. All right, it's kind of dumbbell shaped on a grandiflora, which blooms much earlier in the year than this, blooms in June, early July. Uh, this has got a dumbbell shaped opening. Grandiflora has a uh, more of a rounded opening. There's one of the ripening ovaries right there. Of course, all the flowers, like many Platanthera, like many orchids in general, flowers subtended by bracts. There's another one right there. Little guy down there. Pretty big leaves on this thing for an orchid, you know. Some uh, some orchids, you know, barely, are barely doing any photosynthesizing. All orchids, of course, heavily dependent on mycorrhiza in the ground. You know, they need to interact. And uh, we're kinda on the outspill of a, of a pond further up. And there's another, you know, marshy pond down right there. Just kind of in the middle of a bunch of this Onoclea. Sensibilis fern. There's a goldenrod growing in here. You got oaks above. And just, uh, I just saw one where, you know, there's, uh, there's one of the fertile fronds on that, uh, Onoclea 
that sensitive fern. So, Potanthera grandifo uh, Potanthera psychotes. I was actually here looking for, I mean, the remnants of uh, of Grandifoli Grandiflora to see if I could see it. But I don't think it's, that was, you know, almost 10 years ago it had been seen in this area. I don't think it's hanging around here anymore. So we'll keep going on. I've actually been here for a while. I haven't really shot much footage, but I've seen a bunch of good stuff. Most of it, I'll just show you on the way back to my car. There's a couple other spots around here I'm going to hit. But uh, I'm just going up ahead a little bit to check out this spot that we might see a Coralariza, another orchid. And then we'll be on our way over to the next spot. Some cool asters, like I said, I get to show you on the way out in some sort of pea that uh, I've never I've never seen before. But we'll, uh, we'll trudge on. Check out this cool nabalus, this cool uh, rattlesnake root, as they call it. Not sure offhand what species, but I'll figure it out. Got your anthers dangling below. Remember, this is uh, Asteraceae. So even though this looks like, you know, a flower, a single flower, maybe with multiple stamens hanging off of it, you get in there. Sure enough, you could tell that's multiple flowers in an involucre. Uh, Sicoroidea subfamily, so same, come on, there we go, same subfamily as dandelions, lettuce, etc. There are those anthers, already popped out through, or I'm sorry, that would be the, uh, the stigma, had already popped out through the anthers, so you can see the anthers are down here, but all the pollen's on the tip of the stigma, that's secondary pollen presentation, see those little ridges at the end of the, uh, the ray floor right there? Sure enough, Sicoroidae, um, no disc flowers, unlike a, a species, a couple of species we're going to go look at in a bit, which have, you know, nothing but disc flowers. These have nothing but ray flowers in this tribe. Some of them aren't open yet. Pretty cool, pretty easy to see how the secondary pollen presentation is working, the, uh, working there. You get a few species of Nabalus, you get a real rare one, I think endemic up in the White Mountains, Nabalus bootsii, which uh, I've never seen before, but this is obviously... One of the bigger, more common ones. Those leaves also kind of give it away. You know, a sicaroidy. Uh, these things had a lousy year last year. But he's doing pretty good this year. It's a cool looking plant, you know? Very cool looking plant. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out how we're gonna get out through this thicket. I've, I've, I've not covered much terrain, but I've uh, seen some cool stuff. Okay, I come to the end. Of the little trail I laid out. This nice woodland. Uh, no, couldn't find you know Coralariza maculata anywhere over here. Um, went right right up to the spot where it had been seen an iNaturalist. Couldn't find it, but that's okay. Uh, tons of good yera over here. Got a whole bunch of these cool maiden hair ferns too. So that's nice at least. And then just I mean, I'm like tripping over good yera pubescens so. That guy's having a great year. Maybe the Coralariza is not having such a good year. I saw it last. Uh, I saw it last season, though. So no, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, you want to go check that out? I'll put the little. I'll put the episode that that's in right here. If you want to go see it, cool Acarophyllus orchid. Uh, in any case, I think it's about time to get uh, to get out of here. This has been, uh, you know, seen some cool stuff. Don't get me wrong, but this terrain is a. Uh, it's not it, as the kids say. It's not it. So uh, I'm going to back my way out of here. i show you some of the cool stuff I've seen on my way in, you know, before the conditions, you know, really got kind of crazy. And then we'll uh, we'll check out one other thing that I wanted to see on the way out of here. And uh, I think I think that'll be that. To give you an idea of what I've been trudging through for pretty much all day, just this thick, you know, brambles broken up by Comptonia peregrina. You know, a plant which I love. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, how is stuff's either spiky or it's poisonous. There's a lot of these cool hazelnuts around, though. Well, when I get down back onto what what I guess passes for the trail through here, I'll show you some of these cool beaked. I think it's beaked or winged hazelnut. I don't know. Uh, one of the one of the hazelnuts, Corylus uh, species, growing through here. You get, yeah, what is that? Popular granted dentata. Got a big tooth aspen right there. All these pioneer species, I'm pretty sure they've been logging this. So, I don't know. It's uh, not really not really much of a trail, but I guess that's okay. So, uh, let's hack our way back through. And uh, I'll show you 
um, to get some cool oops um, it's a cool upatorium I'll show you and uh, that's just about it I think oh oh the coolest thing I'll put that right at the end you also got a Roos Glabra right there. No Roos Typhina, just Roos Glabra. You go near the seacoast, it's all, you know, Roos, um, oh, there's a big, uh, <laughs> these bastards, these big blackberries, Rubus. I don't know what species, I don't really care. It's kind of pissing me off, but yeah. Here's a small one, just got a few fruits on them. That's Roos Glabra. That's uh, the smooth sumac. Not to be confused with Roost Typhina, the staghorn sumac. Same genus, just the uh, Roost Typhina is obviously a lot fuzzier and hairier. But uh, I gotta, I gotta focus on what I'm doing here. Here's a little Lobelia in the family Campanulaceae, Lobelia inflata. I'm guessing because of those little inflated pods. Supposedly they've got Lobelia spicata here too, but I haven't seen it. Just a whole bunch of uh, the much more diminutive Lobelia inflata. And uh, there was a couple other spots I wanted to hit nearby here, and they saw a doggo. But uh, I'm feeling pretty, pretty beat, and I had a pretty demoralizing week at work. And you know what? I, I got something. Ow, fuck! I got something real nice to show you at the end of this. So I think we'll, uh, you know, we'll go back over on this wetland here. I got to cross back through that. There's a couple of uh, asters I'll show you, or I think maybe just the one. But in any case. In any case, we'll uh, we'll be on our way here. All right, I've been seeing this everywhere. This is uh, Lysimachia ciliaris. This is a fringed loosestrife, Families primulaceae. I guess a little bit more common out here, you know, in the western or central part of the state. These guys are looking like they're just wrapping up. Uh, Primrose family, if I didn't already say that, and uh, does well on this site. I'm used to. I mean, I've seen a ton of. Lysimachia quadrifolia everywhere, just, you know, your regular world loose strife. But, uh, you know, always cool to meet a new Lysimachia. A few, a few species native to the region, you know. Over here you get some sort of, uh, some sort of Circea. Onagraceae is the family. The uh, evening primrose family. Real weird flowers, look at that. That's nice. I'm just kind of dreading my walk back through here. I, I, I've picked so many ticks off myself. Uh, I put the bug spray on. It actually helped. The bug spray actually helped. I got out of my car, walked around for five minutes, and I picked like eight ticks off of me. Um, but even after putting the bug spray on, I'm still finding them on me. I'm sweating like a hog. You know, I'm all cut up from the, uh, the, th uh, the, the, uh, Fucking blackberries. Horrible week at work. Broke my tripod doing this today. But you know what? What am I going to do? Not do it? I don't think so. We shall trudge on. Yeah, I didn't see this guy when I came through the first time. Got another orchid. Another species of Platanthera. Another kind of common one, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to have this guy in another video that's already going to be out. So I won't go on at length. But this is Platanthera clevelata. A cool one, not one of the showier platanthras, but you can see how these things get, you know, a ton of, uh, you know, a ton of variation um, just between them. This one doesn't have the crazy fringes, you know, on the flowers there. He's almost done too, but he does, however, have a very, very impressive nectar spur. Uh, reduced, but you can still see he's got the bracts that subtend the ovary. I think that's just one of the cool, that's one of the cool things you get in Platanthera. But then again, you see that in like, like Cypripedium. Looks nothing like Platantheras do. And they'll still have a bract subtending the ovary. These are one of the self-pollinators. But they still get visited by insects. They will self-pollinate. But with that nectar spur, they still get visited by insects. So who knows what the story is there. You know, I'm dialed in for orchids, so I'm walking through. This is this is at the height, you know. This is the height of my eyes. You're walking through here. Pretty hard to notice that, but I still saw them. I still saw them. So, without further ado, we're going to go through the, uh, the, the tick paradise here. Okay, so here's one of those cool asters I was talking about. This is Eupatorium perfoliatum. This is the common bone set. Um... 
you can see all sorts of cool, you know, wasps and stuff hang out on it. Thing smells delightful. It's got the really cool, yeah, look how big these bastards are. They don't mind me, they just, you know, they're just after the, after the youp, you know, more power to you guys. Uh, oh, this, look at, look at, they love this thing. I wonder what kind of wasps those are. I have some wasp people who might be able to tell me. Anyway, uh, you know, Aster, this is a, um, this one is in the Eupatori tribe. So that whole tribe, which is, you know, Stevia, Liatris, Eutrochium, um, Eupatorium, for which it's named, you know, none of them, they don't have any sort of, uh, they don't produce any sort of, um, of the ray flowers, just, just disc flowers, just the hits, you know? So we still got those long little styles poking out. We've got some cool beetles hanging out in the thing too. And uh, yeah, they like this type of habitat. You get a real, real rare endemic one down in the Cape, Eupatorium nova anglii, uh, which I've seen before. I got a video about that. I'll put that up. Uh, probably not doing that well this year because that kind of needs, um, you know, low, low water to really do well. But the, the Perfolia atom's doing just fine. Uh, this can take being inundated, I believe, a little bit more, which I mean it is inundated, than the... Um, New England bone set, but you know, whatever. In the New England bone set, the flowers will look the same, but the leaves and the overall, you know, habit, habit of the plant is completely different. Habitat's different too. No clue what makes that noise, but whatever. All right, let's keep going. And of course, this guy here is also in the Eupatori tribe. This is St. John's, uh, not St. John's Wort. This is Joe Pie Weed, and they're named, both named after a guy. It's got the world leaves, you know, got those really nice purple flowers. Just coming into bloom now. Most of them I've seen. Yeah, that one's in full bloom back there. Also covered in bugs, got a nice bumblebee right there. Most of them I've seen have not been in full bloom. And I mean, these are you know, big winners with the native plant people. I believe that this would be Eupatorium maculatum. You get a Eupatorium, um, you get the coastal plain one, you get hollow joe pie, but you get a few species, not many in the genus. And I believe the entire genus is restricted to Eastern North America. I could be mistaken on that. You get some in the central states that are a little bit different. It's not a huge genus, but it's a really cool one and really prolific, you know, where, where it does well. Also very beautiful and beneficial to the uh, wildlife that are clearly making good use out of it. And then as promised, here are the fruits on a, uh, this is Coriolis Americana. So this is the American hazelnut. Those are those fruits. That's where the, uh, you know, the hazelnuts come out of. Leaves are, you know, pretty hard to mistake too. A very leathery, tough plant. These have been everywhere. I've also seen uh, Coriolis cornuta, I think I'm saying that right, which is the beaked hazelnut everywhere around here too, which instead of, you know, looking like this kind of comes to a point. I'll show you one if I can find one, but I'm not going to go out of my way. All right, I got to get out of this thicket before I quite literally become a tick. Oh yeah, goldenrod and bone set. That's nice. Both completely covered in wasps. People worry about these wasps, honestly. I just walk right through the plants. They fly away. They're not, they're not interested in you. Not at all. Not when there's a nectar buffet open and ready and waiting for them. Yeah. You know, wasps, wasps, you guys get a bad rap. You know, I think you're cool. I mean, yellow jackets can be assholes. I've been stung by them a couple times, but I mean, never... Never doing what I'm doing now. I'll walk over a nest or something, but you guys are just hanging out. You guys are just eating. They'll just fly away from you. Yeah, these guys are really cool. Two. What makes that noise? You're scaring the shit out of me. Oh, there's a honeybee. He's getting in on it too. I prefer the native, the native bees. You know, call me, uh, call me an elitist or whatever. It's always save the bees. But, you know, save the wasps doesn't have the same ring to it. Also, I, I recently just learned, and by recently, I mean I was scrolling through INAT, just checking out, making sure I was getting some of the names of things right that I was looking at here. There's supposedly a ton of, uh, a ton of, uh, poison sumac in here. And I don't know what that looks like. I mean, this is a viburnum right here that I'm like, <gasps> excuse me. Have I mentioned that I haven't eaten a proper meal today? This is a viburnum I'm looking at here now, which is... I'm not that worried about, but, you know, I should probably get some sugar in me. It's a little bit difficult to pull over, over here, to uh, find a good spot to eat. But I'm almost out of this really shit part 
of the uh, of the trail here. We just walked through all that. Just beautiful, lit up with goldenrod and uh, bone set. Eupatorium, oh, and uh, and uh, Euthamia too, golden top. So the asters are coming out. It's that time of the year, my friends. Uh, God. Down over in there is where I saw that Plantantherus psychotes. Also, apparently, where people were saying they had seen poison sumac, which I mean, I can't readily identify. It's not a plant super familiar to me, other than the fact that I'm sure it's got, you know, probably superficially resembles a sumac. But I think it needs to be more out in the open. I think I don't think it grows in the shade where I was really, you know, fucking around in. But, you know, if I break out in a massive rash, that'd be really funny because I got so much work to do next week at work. You know, I just, I've been bummed. Even, even seeing what I'm going to show you at the end of this video, I've still been just really, really bummed, man. Get your Spiri Alba. Spiri Tomatose around here too, but eh, that's not really that interesting. All right, let's uh, let's get out of here. I don't really talk too much about violets, but it's pretty unusual to see them, you know, in August. I guess these are bird's foot violets, somewhat somewhat uncommon or at least unusual. There are the leaves down there. There are the flowers. Uh, I I don't really know what to say. I saw these pop up on Ina. It's one of the more commonly observed species here, but this is the, I'm only seeing it now on the way back. I'm guessing this isn't prime time for them, although. I'm looking to my left now, or I'm about to head. I didn't, I didn't walk this part of the trail when I came in. You know, I'm looking down the road to my left, and I can see there's a few more of them. So I'll, I'll update if there's any additional information worth posting about these. Because, I, I mean, I'm not. There's, what, 30, 40 different species of violet native to the region. Uh, most of them just common, you know, come up in lawns and stuff. But uh, I won't dismiss it right away. So here's the native North American equivalent of a clover. This is a Lespedisa, Lespedisa capitata. And sure enough, you get in there, it's a pea flower. It's got the trifoliate leaves, bush clovers, I think they're sometimes called. But uh, native, this is a real weird distribution. You get it all up and down the East Coast and then just not at all in the Appalachians, and then it's scattered around, you know, the Gulf Coast and the Great Plains. So, doesn't really like it, you know, where it gets too high in elevation or too wooded, but uh, seems to be doing well in this sort of uh, tick-infested, uh, you know, sandy, uh, what do you call this? Not really, I wouldn't really call it savanna, because I'm pretty sure this is all cut back, you know, by, 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 uh, people came in and cut this back. I don't know if it was a forest before, or maybe some kind of, maybe it is a sand plain. I don't know. You get a lot of the sand plain species. More, more on that in just a bit. But yeah, that's a, they call that a bush clover. Uh, Lespedisa, Lespedisa capitata. But also just, uh, I've realized that the ticks are, you know, they kind of go in bunches. I just walked through a whole zone where there was, just dozens of them. It's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty sketchy out here, you know. Okay, this doesn't look like much, but this is actually one of the indicator species that explained, you know, what I'm about to show you in a minute here. This is actually a St. John's wort. This is a uh, Hypericum gentianoides. Doesn't look much like. Oh God, there's something on me. Doesn't look like mu much like the common St. John's wort at all. Of course, uh, gentianoides comes from the, the epithet comes from the fact that all those little tiny flowers all close up shop for the day, you know, pretty early in the morning at that. Uh, cool plant covered up next to a little little toad flax there. A little, uh, not the Lanthus canadensis blue toad flax. Cool plant, never really talk about it. And then of course, just more ass loads. Saldago. Numerous species that I've seen today. I feel bad I haven't stopped to key a single one of them out. But, you know. Yeah, they'll be here. The Saldago is in bloom now. And it'll keep going you know, for, for quite a while. Into the uh, into the early fall. Or even, you know, even mid to late fall. Pretty much until it frosts. You get most of these, uh, you know, Saldago species going off. But, alright. We shall continue on. Okay, 
I think we're gonna wrap this up, but right here is a plant that, I mean, it's in New England, true blue, endemic to the region. I'm used to seeing it on the sea coast, but here it is, you know, inland. That guy fell over. Here it is inland. Only patch of it I seen the entire day. And it looks good. You look real good. I mean, it's still early in the season for it. You can see it just started going off, basically. This is Liatris Nova Anglii. This is the New England Blazing Star. I mean, come on. Lots of species of Liatris, all native to uh, North America. In fact, most of them kind of exclusively native to um, the uh, United States. I think you get one down in the Caribbean and one in Mexico, but those those two species respectively also occur in the United States. And I mean, talk about an aster, man. This is also Eupatori tribe, like Eupatorium and like uh, Eutrochium, like the Joe Pie weeds we were looking at. Let's get some of the nicest phyleries of any aster I could think of. Long styles hanging out there. These ones haven't emerged yet. And I mean, again, pretty early, pretty early for this guy. I think of this more as like an August, a late August, September plant. Maybe there'll be more on the way, but I mean, yeah, I'm used to seeing us in the seacoast. Like I said, we're central mass right now. We're pretty far inland. So this is just about as far inland as it gets. And it needs this, you know, this sand to really do its thing. You know, you can go to Kennebunk Plains and see these things everywhere. That's kind of the go-to spot for them. But of course... It's a treat to just stumble across the thing you know, out in the out in the cut like this. Coming up with the pitch pine, as expected. Populus, some sort of aspen. Not not also not too unexpected. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at one other thing. The, if I go down the road and I hike, you know, a little a little ways into the woods, there's supposed to be a um, I know it is coiloglossum. It's also registered as Dactylariza. I think it's also at one point even in the genus Platanthera. But there's supposed to be a cool um, kind of rare orchid nearby here. But uh, pretty cool to see this Liatris. There was a Trichostema on the ground too uh, that I had seen. But uh, I guess I guess, uh, I guess guess not. And if you do look up Liatris Nova Anglia, you can see that it occurs, you know, in the area it's a rare plant and it's near threatened it's, it's protected in every state it occurs in which is you know uh all of new england except for all of southern new england except for uh vermont you get it in southern maine and then i think you get it on long island too but um what was i gonna say yeah i mean this is pretty much as far west as its population goes so it's a treat to see really cool plant New England endemic and you may have saw the sky on my way in. I knew that even if it was a rough day, we'd still get something out of it, just you know, by virtue of seeing this 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 lovely plant, one of my favorites. Standing, you know, three and a half, four feet high, bright purple flowers, and he's just getting started for the season. So good luck to you, sir. And uh if I don't end up seeing anything down the road a bit, this'll this'll be where I cut it off. So Either way, I hope to see you back soon. Well, I have not found what I'm looking for, but I did find a whole bunch more uh, Platanthera psychodes. Here's one right here. I've stumbled across a little uh, little bog type thing. I'm gonna poke around. Oh, you probably can't see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna poke around here for a minute. Like meeting an old friend. Deja vu, huh?